On today's episode, we're gonna talk about a brand that completely disappeared from the face of the earth for decades and then reappeared in 2018. It's amazing, it's Tysco Reborn. I'm gonna cover all the details, but for right now, what I need you to do is focus. I need you to get comfortable. I need you to make some corn dogs, pop some popcorn, get a candy bar, call your mom, hang up on your mom, because you realize this is way more important than that. Let's do this together, come on. Tysco was originally established in the 1950s and quickly became one of Japan's prominent guitar makers alongside legendary brands like Gaiatone. They disappeared decades ago, but suddenly at Winter Nam in 2018, they reappeared as a pedal brand. I remember walking through the Nam Hall, seeing these brightly colored pedals, a booth that was super colorful, and the name Tysco over it. I immediately said to myself, wait, Tysco's a guitar company. They make funky, weird guitars, very strange stuff from the 60s. I have a few. What's up with this? So I found the amazing team that put this back together and launched these pedals, and I had to ask them, why pedals? Tysco has never been a brand that's been defined by a single product. It's always been defined, though, by the blending of electronic signals or electronic waves and, and music and traditional instruments and what you can get out of that. People think about Tysco and the defining thing is like unconventional design, bold expression, and obviously like crazy guitars, lots of switches, unusual pickups. Um, that was in the essence of what Tysco was. Um, but also pedals are such a great way now and have become such an important part of many guitar setups. Um, and it does allow you to be bold and expressive. The, the main thing for us is that we are taking the spirit of what has defined Tysco decade after decade, and we're applying that to our product design, to our product delivery, and to our brand expression. Without further ado, we have some pedals to play, pedals to talk about, and I'm gonna start off with two for this first jam to demonstrate them. First up, in the pair is the overdrive so this guy came out recently it's fantastic it is designed and built in the spirit of soft clippers so things like a tube screamer a timmy or even designs like my morning glory so it does that sound light to medium gain overdrive it has a treble and bass control that are really powerful and it has a kick switch which when you engage that gives you a little more gain and a mid bump it complements the sound of this pedal very well, works great with humbuckers and single coils. And then I'm gonna combine this with the delay. This was part of the original release when they relaunched the brand and it's wild. It's based around a 3205 chipset, kind of in the lineage of a Boss DM2. So think all Bucket Brigade, vintage 1980s delay. Now it does really simple slap back, really nice quarter note sounds. It does all the things you expect from a Bucket Brigade delay, but it has a really unique, wild, crazy, and fantastic modulation circuit. It's designed to do the simple, but to also run away, do crazy stuff, and do a lot of sounds that some people would hate. You're not gonna hate it, but there's lame people out there who don't like creative delay. And those lame people don't deserve this pedal, but you deserve this pedal and you deserve to hear these together. So we're gonna do this and I'm gonna play the Harmony Silhouette. It is made by the same company, kind of brand that has relaunched all of these brands. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Let's see what you think. Let's do it.
gonna keep the overdrive in place, but I'm gonna turn on that kick switch. It's gonna get just a little bit more overdriven, just a little bit crazy. It's gonna be good. And I'm gonna add the boost pedal. So the Tysco boost is really, really interesting. You can run it at nine or 24 volts with this switch, which does that internally. And then it has normal treble and flat. So this is different low frequency roll offs. I'm gonna put it in the treble position, which has a hint of a range master thing, but not really, but a hint. A hint doesn't mean it is a range master. It just means it's kind of maybe like that. I'm gonna slam that into the overdrive. It's gonna be great. And if you don't want a treble boosting, you just go to normal or flat and you can get sounds like EP Booster or all the other boosts that are out on the market. This does a really good job of covering anything you might possibly need from a boost. Here's the jam. Next up is Tysco's newest offering. It is called simply the interface. Let me shoot straight and be honest with you, which I try to do on this show. I have a tiny simple brain and this pedal does a lot of stuff. It does so much stuff that I get lost in the stuff that it does. It's amazing, it's revolutionary. And I had to ask Ben, the designer, exactly how he would pitch this to someone like me, possibly someone like you. I don't know. You're all smarter than me, but he's going to explain it to us and then I'm going to demo it. Ben, what does it do? It gives you the functionality of a simple recording interface so you can record direct from your pedal board, but you can also use it for silent headphone practice. You could run, you can use it as an effects router um, or just for general routing purposes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take this and we're going to route the guitar into Pro Tools, into the Capital Chambers plugin, which replicates the reverb chambers that Les Paul designed, run that back into here from the DAW into the amp, mic the amp back into the DAW. It's amazing. The interface, there's nothing like it. I mean that, and this is gonna sound good and you're gonna like it, I promise. Next up is the Tysco Distortion. It does a lot of stuff. First off, it is a distortion that to me has the feeling of several different types of distortions. It makes me think of things like the classic MOSFET Distortion MT10 by Ibanez, but it also has that feeling of like the Plexi Drive by Wampler or even my Charlie Brown. It just does a really good job at sounding like an amp distortion because it is cascading stages. I think it's a very realistic sounding overdrive distortion and the tone and presence controller are great has a muscle switch and a tight switch, which help you adjust the feel response and just how it reacts with your guitar. And then you have a boost here with a more knob. 
they called it more because loud is more good. I don't know that they did, but I like to think that they did because it's one of their newer offerings. I'm not saying that I named the knob. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, Josh came up with that amazing loud is more good saying, dropped it, you know, years ago at this point. And maybe that's why it says more. I don't think that's why they did it. I don't know. I'm going to play the delay as well. Also, Steven, thank you for loaning me this amazing vintage Tasco guitar. It's tuned to an open chord and it's magical for this song. This song is like stank rock blues and it's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Next is my favorite of the Tysco pedals. It's no shocker that I like it because it is based around a classic octave fuzz design. It's not those newfangled digital octave fuzzes. No, it's old school. It's kind of like the Octavia or more like the Fox Tone Machine, but it's adjusted and modified. It has a really unique nature to it, even though it's obviously based around those classic circuits. It has a better octave response, so it's more pronounced. You hear the octave when you're playing, and sometimes in the actual vintage units, it's kind of hard to hear it tracking. You have to have a lot of gain and a lot of volumes, but this does a fantastic job with that. And I like the frequency response of this. I feel like it has more low end, and I feel like it has a better high end that doesn't completely rip your face off because the part of octave fuzz that's fun is that octave fuzz almost rips your face off and your audience's face faces off, but this is very mellow and balanced in its attack and how it rips your face off. So with that said, uh, we're going to play this delay and I'm going to play Nick's old Tysco guitar that still has blood from when he cut his hand on it. There's blood all over the guitar. This is exciting. This has never happened on the show. And in the comments, I'm going to start a bidding war. If you want Nick's old guitar, there's blood all over it. Um, we're going to just start highest bidder. I think we'll just sell it. I think we'll sell it to the highest bidder. Hypothetically, we might not. We might. I don't actually know what we're doing, but I'm going to play the guitar and I'm going to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, you're dead to me.
Now that we've played them, I need to wrap this up. There's some pretty important things that are slightly mind blowing. Number one important thing is, I believe it to be a fact that the original founder of Tysco from the 50s, 60s became a monk, like an actual monk. It's amazing. Not Monk the Detective from that hit TV show, an actual monk. How cool is that? Did he like play guitar? Like, I don't know. Like, it's fascinating. Next, these pedals are not painted in a traditional way. When I first saw them, I was just really taken away with how unique, how vibrant, and they just looked incredible. So when you look at these, what are they doing here? I had to figure this out. I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, the case design is unique, but look at the paint. So there's a process here. I'm gonna let Ben describe it to you. Go for it, Ben. The pedals aren't painted. Um, so it's kind of like water transfer printing, hydrographics. Like literally each enclosure gets dipped into water and then the print gets transferred onto um, the enclosure. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it, it allows us to experiment with a lot of colors and a lot of patterns that, especially on the, pat on the pattern front, not necessarily something that you always see, I guess, in the world of pedals, but that's, that's what it allowed us to do having, um, using um, hydrographic printing. Basically, we just wanted every single aspect of the pedal and of the product to, you know, remind people of what high school was back in the day and like, you know, wacky colors, like, like my favorite high school guitar was the Spectrum 5, like the blue one with like the multicolored switches and stuff. Um, and I guess that was us trying to, you know, bring that back and just pay, pay homage to all of that craziness. Number three amazing thing is that over COVID, Tysco released an activity coloring book for me, for you, for our kids, for our parents and our grandparents, and for people we don't even know. It's a coloring book. You just, you, it's an activity thing. You download it for free. It's a PDF. You print it off. You look at it. You give them away. It's on their website. There's a link in the description below. It's pretty amazing. And lastly, and I think most cool, most coolest thing about this is that Tysco was brought back to life by this incredible conglomerate. The name of this conglomerate is Band Lab Technologies. They are a collective of music focused brands. They took on mono in 2016. You know that from gig bags and pedal boards. Heritage guitars, they're incredible. They bought that. They brought back Harmony. I played the silhouette today. Tysco pedals, obviously, Guitar Magazine, Guitar.com, Music Tech, Uncut, and NME. They have tons of brands. Honestly, this is like world domination level stuff here. They're not playing around. They are coming for any brand you like. They might end up buying me out, right? I don't even know what's, is someone knocking on the door? Are they, do they want, you can't have my brand yet. I don't, how much? Okay, we'll, we'll talk later. Let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 1967's Takashi Tarachi and the Bunnies. Let's go classics. I think I'm saying his last name right. And I also think I'm saying it wrong. He's also just known as Takashi Terry. And he has a lot of instrumental albums and he was kind of a big deal in the Japanese electric guitar scene. He was a promoter of various brands and different movements that happened in the 60s and 70s. And this is just a really cool record. It is like instrumental music that was kind of popular at the time. There's kind of surf style stuff, spaghetti Western tunes. It's fun. I can't really read anything in it. And that's what makes it even more fun. It's awesome. Check it out. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you know more about Terry, I'd like to know in the comments and put some other albums. Let's just have a discussion and figure this out together. Just help me. I'm just asking for your help. I need your help. I need it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you go and check out these Tysco pedals. They really are a breath of fresh air in a very saturated pedal market. I love every one of these. They're all kind of favorites. You know, you know, you know how I am. It's fine. Check them out. Let me know in the comments what your favorite one was from this episode. And if you own one of the Tysco pedals, tell me all about it, how you use it, where you first saw them. It's a really, really fun conversation. I also wanna bring up this amazing book. 
is called The History of Japanese Electric Guitars by Frank Myers. Frank, I've never met you or talked to you that I'm aware of, but I want to. This book is amazing. I use it all the time for research. And um, there's just such a fascinating story in here about Tysco. It's great. Now is the important part of the episode. It's a giveaway, a pretty big one. Uh, it's a mono bag with a board that goes in the bag, the Tysco Fuzz, and the Tysco Overdrive. So we're gonna give these away. There is a link in the description below for the giveaway. You go do that thing, you go down there, you click the link, you just do whatever you need to do to win this because we're gonna give it away. It's gonna be fun. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of every single future episode forever like till the world ends literally i mean we're gonna we're are we quitting this show ever never never will we stop bringing pedals and stuff to you that's what we're here for we'll see you later so proud of us